Well, folks, I decided to make a another couple videos. Uh, I'm just going to put some clips together. I'll try to put make it in two videos of uh, clues two through seven. But first, I think there's a couple things you kind of have to need, have in the back of your mind. One is Forrest's mysticism, at least in the book. I'm not saying he really believed this. I don't know. This is the way it was in the book. From the time he crashed in the jungle, and he had the went took the helicopter to the waterfall and the Philadelphia caper until he almost died of cancer. He had this mysticism that he developed, all is kind of one. And he, he talks about it several times. It's all is one thing. It's kind of almost a Buddhistic, Hinduistic concept. I'm, I'm simplifying, and I'm not saying he really believed that because I don't know. But that's what he's painting in the, in the, in the uh, book. So I just keep that in the back of your mind because you never know when that could help you. And then I just on a side note here, his use of whirlwind, like helicopters, whirlwind, um, it's kind of, it's kind of different because um, in the Bible, Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, and in Wizard of Oz, Dorothy was taken to another dimension in a whirlwind by a whirlwind, and it's used as in imagery. It's the imagery used, and I don't know if he did that on purpose. I think he did it on purpose, but it's just kind of interesting to know. The third thing I'd like to get to is Norse mythology, because they had the Belfrost or Bifrost Bridge, and also called the Rainbow Bridge, where when you died, you crossed over to where the gods were. And you, you get glimpses of this in his book, because he, he called his dad Thor, and he referred to Skippy as, as a lot like his father, and he was kind of like a god to him. And, he actually rode, uh, his name of his horse that he rode was uh, Lightning, which is, of course, Thor was the god of lightning and thunder. So it just, he gives you a little glimpse into that. But the Rainbow Bridge, that term is still used today. How do we how do we use it? Usually with our dogs. When our dog dies, we say, he crossed the Rainbow Bridge, which gets us to the Gilbert Gall painting. This is front and center in the whole treasure hunt. Um, the Gilbert Gall $5,500 painting was, was a guy standing on a wooden bridge holding a smoking gun with a dead dog bleeding all over the floorboards. That's our rainbow bridge. And I think I just, you have to understand that when you get in, especially when you get around to the eighth clue. And I just, I just want to put that out there. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you enjoy what I've put together. It's not very good, but I think it, you know, can be used. So uh, on to the first, or second clue, excuse me, on to the second clue. So folks, I guess we're ready to start the second clue. Just a little bit review here. Our first clue was begin it where warm waters halt. And we found it on page 126, a picture of the treasure chest. So go watch that video if you ain't seen it. So I just wanted to review that. So we're, ready, we're getting ready to start now the second clue. So what do you think, look in the poem, what do you think the second clue is? Well, remember in my first video I said, I mentioned three different opposites for begin. Well, the one I really liked the best was end, begin and end. So for our second clue, let's just, let's hit begin right here. Let's just try begin and see what happens. So begin and end and we'll be right back after this. Okay we got begin and we've got end and unlike the first when we did our first clue we're going to count begin and we're going to count end because in our first one we didn't start counting to halt so we didn't count the opposites. This time we're going to count the opposites. So let's begin. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty seven. All righty. So, folks, thirty seven was our number. If you go to if you go to page 37, I'll be honest with you, I can't see no uh, verification or anything but help, you know, verify. So 
on this second clue here, I'm going to give you a, a couple. I'm not going to go as deep on others as I am on this one. I just want you to get the idea that there's this whole puzzle is full of threes, 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 threes. So if you go to page 85, you got 37 mm rockets. You might understand that later, but just, I'm just showing it to you for right now. Turn to page 111. Now he's talking to these kids and they want to know why something feels hot or it feels cold. And he's explaining to them that uh, it's really, what he's trying to explain to them is it's your body temperature. If some, you touch something, your body temperature is 98, what, 98.6, roughly. So if you touch something that's 101, it's going to feel warm to you. If you touch something that's 78, it's going to feel cold to you. And that's your body temperature is why something feels warmer, cold to you. So you got 98.6 degrees, but it's 37 degrees Celsius. So there you go. So remember, Forrest went to borders. He went to two, went to borders twice. States have borders. Two states would have two borders. Two states that are next to each other would have two borders that are the same border. I wonder what the border between Colorado and New Mexico is. What's well, a 37th degree north parallel? So there, you know, I think that's three, three guesses, right? Or three um, confirmations, I guess you would call it. I think there's a couple more. I'm just kind of letting you see. So I think we're going to keep that 37. So we're going to write. We're going to write 37 here on our board. So our first clue was begin it where warm water salt. Our second clue was begin. So um, what do you think our third clue is? How about it, it, begin it in consecutive order. Remember he said they're all in consecutive order? Begin it. Hmm. So what are we beginning? Hmm, that's kind of strange. We're going to search. Oh, hey, wait a second. Down the fourth paragraph. It says, look quickly down your quest to cease. We're going on a quest. That's what we're, we're looking for treasure. We're going on a quest. So let's watch this and I'll be back in a second. So here we are, folks. Begin it, your quest to cease. We got look down and seek means to look up. Those are our opposites. So let's start here. One, two, three, four, five. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. Now I'm, I'm going to help you out a little bit. 34, 35, if you, if you count the seek and the question mark, but it should be 33. Okay, let's go to the book. So if you go to page 35 in the book, remember, look up and look down where our opposites. Look down at the page. Skippy was older, so I looked up to him, and June was younger, but I couldn't look down to her because my father wouldn't allow it. Does that seem fair? And the question mark there is in parentheses, just like we got here in the it's, it's highlighting the right here. I mean, that's a dead. That's a to me a very very strong confirmation. So on that one, you also have to remember. You're gonna have to remember this. Me in the middle. Remember 35. Me in the middle for naysayers who don't think that this is the right number. So I just wanted to show this like this so you could see how he handled a funny count because he had a lot to, you know, a lot of um, clues going through the poem. And he, if he changes one number, then it changes for all the other clues 
All right, thanks. What's significant about this is it should have been 33. It just shows you what he does. Remember, he might have three clues or four clues going through the same lines. And if he changes, added two more words, then all those counts will be off. So I thought that was really, really great how he, he didn't have to look up to Skippy and he couldn't look down on June. And then he had the question mark in parentheses in the book, which is a dead giveaway to the clue. And I just, that, I just wanted to show you that because that's how he kind of, one of the ways he handled getting around things. Remember, he said it took him 15 years to do this poem, probably because you have to understand how he structured it. So I just, I just wanted to add that. So that was our third clue. So now we got 35. 35. So now we got 37 and 35. We're, we're cooking. So, what do you think our uh, fourth clue would be? Begin it where warm waters halt was our first clue. Begin was our second clue. Begin it was our third clue. Right. Begin it where. That's our, excuse me, that's our fourth clue. So, Begin it where? Now, where in this poem do we have a proper name? Where in the poem do we have a proper name? There's only one. The Home of Brown. Folks, this is the famous Home of Brown. They've made tons of videos on. Here it is. It's right here. So, let's go to this, and I'll be right back. So our fourth clue is begin it where the only proper name in the whole poem is the home of brown and so we got put in below the home of brown and we, down here we got take as the opposite of put now this is the famous home of brown that everybody made <clears throat> all the videos over <clears throat> so let's start counting one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. 54 there, but the next word is take. So let's, you know, we're not supposed to count it, but boy, it says take. Should we take it? So, oh, damn, what do you need? What do you think, folks? I think we should take it. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, give you a little hint. The very, the ninth clue, <laughs> remember, you take it. So let's go to page 55. So this would be an easy one. Homer Brown. The long ride home. I, this is our, this is our uh, fourth. You got four fingers there. This is our fourth uh, clue. But what I really wanted to show you was uh, here. Our fourth clue is it's 55. So I wanted to show you this for for a reason. You got page 55. Forrest is riding shotgun, and you got dead critters all over the road down here. Well, what's that remind you of? It reminds you of the Gilbert Gall painting. The black and white Gilbert Gall painting. It's $5,500. You had a guy on a wooden bridge holding a smoking pistol with a dead dog at his feet bleeding all over the board, which of course is the four, is the road. So from now on, these two merge and you'll get, you'll understand it when you get to the eighth clue. But they had those three things together. So those uh, three things merge those two, 55 and the Gilbert Gall black and white painting. So thank you. And folks, just a quick note here. On page 55, we have flat and flat. And if you go to Too Far to Walk, on page 37, which is also one of our numbers, you have the famous 
two flat tires that supposedly whoever that was, whether it was Howard Hughes or not, just want you to keep those things, flats, want you to keep that in mind. So folks, we, we finally solved the famous Homer Brown. We did, it, we did it in about, what, 30 seconds, two minutes? When all the videos are made out of. So, our little tote board here, we're gonna write 55. And I also wrote flats up here. I'm just gonna keep that in mind. And I wrote, I went back from 35 in the middle. I wrote that there, just a simple reminder for us. And uh, I really can't, I can't say it, stress enough here, folks, the Gilbert Gall painting. $5,500, Homer Brown 55, Forrest was holding a gun, the guy in the bridge is holding a gun, there are dead things on the road, there's a dead dog on the road. The Gilbert Gall painting, I think is, you could probably figure out, is the Rainbow Bridge, you know, a dead dog on the road, that's how we, that's how we refer to when our dogs die, they go over the Rainbow Bridge. I'm just, I'm, I can't stress that enough because when you get to the eighth clue, it's gonna be very obvious down to the seconds of uh, what I'm talking about. Well, anyway, we got now 37, 35, 55. We got on our fourth clue. Now, what would our fifth clue be? Right, begin it where warm. That's our fifth clue. Now do you get it? Remember, all is one. All the clues are part of the first clue. That's how he could get around with double talk. You know, he could say, if you solve the first clue, it'll take you straight to the treasure chest, which it did in the book. But if you saw all the first clue, it'll take you straight to the treasure, that would have taken you straight to the treasure chest. Tell, you tell some of the truth, just not all the truth. So you can see what I'm saying, all is part of the whole. So, sorry I didn't mean to get off on a tangent there. Begin it where warm. Well, what's warm in the poem? Warm is warm, but a blaze is warm. So, for our fifth clue, we're going to use that, remember I, in the very first video I said, for our very first clue, I said, begin had three different opposites for it. We're going to use that third opposite this time. Begin and halt, but this time we're going to go down to a place that's warm. The blaze is warm. Our opposites are begin and halt. We're starting at the blaze. Be right back. So our fifth clue is begin it where warm. So our opposites are going to be begin and halt. That's the third time we've used begin. So a blaze is warm. We're going to begin in a blaze. And since begin is our, we start is one of our opposites. We start out with begin as an opposite. We can't have look quickly down. So we have to eliminate that and we start counting after that. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four. 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. Now we'll go to the top. Oh, excuse me. 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83. 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 107. So, folks, we got page 107. Now, I really can't make much of this. It's Kelly and Zoe. 
they're holding their arms funny, but I really couldn't use that as a confirmation. So sometimes I think it's best we stand back a little bit and look at the big picture. And by that, I mean this big picture. I think it's one, it's on page 18 or 19. And it's a bunch of other little, other young kids in school. And the short of it is, if you count all the kids, you'll come up with 112. Now, remember when Eric Sloan lied about his age, said he was five years younger than he was? Remember when Mr. Frosty said he's going to uh, deduct Forrest's paycheck and Forrest didn't have a clue what that meant? Well, we've got five names down here at the bottom. Counting me, Ed, Edard, Pat, Kaser, and Skippy. So let's take five. There's 112 kids here. Take five of them, take five off 112, that's 107. That's pretty cool. So that that's interesting. So let's look down here at old Edard. Yeah, you've heard about Edard before, probably. You know, if Edard, right there, if he had a W in his name, it'd be Edward. I'd like that a lot better. So lo and behold, over here, look how these ladies are holding their arms. There's Edard's missing W. That's interesting, isn't it? So, let's go back to page 107 again and look at it a little differently this time. W. I don't know what it means. 107W. So I think we're pretty solid on that. If you go to, um, uh, I almost forgot to mention, you got the five names at the bottom. This is our fifth clue. But you also got one, two, three, four. Four circles in the picture. Um, and this is our fourth number after the first clue. I think you'll understand it a little bit later. I just wanted to bring that. I forgot to put it in the first time. Page 107, too far to walk. I think that's kind of self-explanatory if you get the meaning of it. So let's go over to Scrapbook 107. And I'm not even going to go into the silverware. Got a $5 bill. 107 is our fifth clue. And down here at the bottom, we've got the word location in parentheses. So, folks, we got a 107. Now, I have to be honest, it was about two years ago. Um, I was stumped because I go to page 107, I couldn't figure out anything with these two daughters there. Somebody posted on Reddit about Edard's missing W and the teacher's hands or arms like a W. And then, man, it clicked and I was able to get that. So, I hope they found the I hope they solved it too. So I think we're going to end right here, and uh, I'll be back as soon as I can, probably with the neck with the sixth and the seventh clue, and that's probably all the farther I'm going to go because I don't think you know, I'll just leave it at that. So uh, thanks for joining me.